said that you started with uh, lots of different names that you did not keep using very long. So do you have any uh, perhaps embarrassing examples for other names? Yeah, the one before was deformity and the one before that was utmost deformity. And at some point it was embalmed. So there you have them. Well, already early demo titles, early song titles uh, really gave the idea that you were quite aware of the mortality of the band, that you do not last forever. But still this topic of uh, suicide was not the center of the band right then, right? No, not really. Uh, at the time when we started, we were pretty much just uh, young fools who, who were death metal fans and we were pretty much <coughs> imitating um, other bands in the beginning especially in the lyrics. Uh, I think even one of the demo songs contains a whole verse taken from Whitesnake or something like this. <laughs> uh, is it correct that Taneli already did some lyrics for you when he was still not part of the band? Yeah, it was uh, like six months before or something. Uh, he also drew the, the flyers we had and uh, He's related to Mika, so we, we all knew him before he was in the band, but he was like slowly crawling into the band, so to speak. Well, at that stage when you started with the band, you were far from being grown-ups, you were really kids just messing around in a way, but what was the scene in Olu like? Was there a scene existing? Well, uh, I'm not really sure, as we, at that time, we lived in the countryside, a place called Muhos, and uh, I don't know about all, but at least Moors didn't have any any metal scene at all. We were the well. There was this other band called Anthony. They were thrash metal, and Vesa played drums in that band before. But uh, we were pretty much the only band back then. If you look at the thanks list of the debut album, your parents are headlining it, so to say. They are thanked in the very beginning of it. So, in how far did they support you in the beginning of the band and uh, in how far did their love towards the band perhaps grow stronger from album to album? Um, they supported as long as they didn't have to listen to it. And, you know, they, they bought us the, the first instruments and stuff like that, but they didn't really understand what we were doing and I can't really blame them. Do they understand what you're doing by now? Yeah, I guess so. They are almost all of them are coming tonight to see the misery finally end. Now, back in the beginning, you were inspired by other Finnish bands that also started together with you, also being very young, naive, and uh, yet a bit individual. Or were you more hooked on the Swedish scene, especially, which was already back then tremendously growing in a way with bands like Mephisto, Nihilist, Carnage, and so on? Um, We were very much connected with the underground and um, we knew pretty much uh, what was going on in Sweden, whole of Finland, even beyond like South America. Uh, but I don't know who we were influenced by the most. Um, from the bands, from the Finnish bands uh, that still exist, um, Amorphis was there uh, with the name Abhorrence first. And, uh, Nowadays, I think Demigod has recorded again and stuff like that. And, but there was a bunch of bands. It was a real boost in the scene in the early 90s, and I, I think we were part of it. Did you make the same experience in the beginning, starting um, to get hooked on to music and starting to get into music? Have you been more attracted by the really extreme stuff, or from the start on the more melodic thing that you're into as a singer by now? Um. This harder stuff kind of grew into me. I started to listen to bands like Accept, Twisted Sister, White Snake, things like that. And you know, obviously, then came Metallica, Slayer, and, you know, slowly towards uh, more harder music. So, regarding the both of you, what have been your real faves back then? And in comparison to that, what are your current faves by now? So, how did you change in your um, well taste concerning music? Well, uh, back then it was mostly, I think, Slayer and the, the early Metallica and then the, the whole death metal scene um, on the whole, really. 
uh, and still nowadays uh, Slayer is one of my favorite bands but uh, nowadays uh, I think all of us are more open-minded to different kind of stuff but from from the um, rock scene I would say bands like Anathema, Typo Negative uh, are um, pretty much on top of the list. Uh, pretty much the same for me. Uh, the music uh, I listen to now, it's, uh, it varies a lot. Uh, depends on the mood. I mean, I could be listening to uh, Soil Work or Tori Amos. It doesn't really... Uh, as long as it's, it's good music and uh, makes you feel something. Uh, but uh, obviously younger it was all about the aggression and uh, hatred and fuck you attitude. I guess according to a lack of own material, Abhorrence, for example, the band that you mentioned that later became Amorphous, they covered both Thrower and 1990 on stage. So did you do any cover versions, uh, especially live, previous to The Trooper? Um, I think we did some. Uh, at least one song from Death. I can't really remember which one. And I only remember that uh, we didn't do it so well. But uh, at the rehearsal place, we were always playing, playing around with uh, cover versions and stuff like that. But, uh, the idea was never to um, really to record them or, or even play them live. It was just more to have fun with, uh, with other people's stuff. Do you remember the very first sentence gig? Yes, I do. <laughs> It was uh, in a small village called Ylikiminki. And uh, there was this indoors festival called Yli Feelinki. And there was like five or six bands there. And headlining was a Finnish um, classic. I, I better stop there. But it was a band called Cobra. <laughs> and uh, there was like... I don't know, three or four hundred people. And we were, of course, very nervous. All of us were white, but not because of any, any death metal makeup or something like that. Just so nervous that we almost shit ourselves during the, during the 30 minute set. What was your defloration on stage like? Uh, what do you mean? Uh, your first experience losing your virginity to get on stage and um, start as a single confronted with an audience and not just uh, friends in a rehearsal place? I think I was uh, 13 or something and it was this uh, school disco and uh, we played uh, three cover songs from a Finnish band called uh, Stone and uh, not really well but uh, I also remember that I was nervous as hell. The stone guitarist, he's uh, very much known for being a technical genius. Yeah. So you must have fooled around, right? Uh, Your musicians must have fooled and failed. Yes, so we didn't do any solos, so it was something really crappy. Right now there is a tendency, especially um, coming from the label Extreme Records in Spain, to re-release classical Finnish death metal albums with massive bonus material. When Century Media re-edited Shadows of the Past, it contained the Journey to Folia demo, but it did not include the first demo recordings, the first two tapes. So why did you not um, put out something like a complete demography at that stage? Well, uh, you know, the, the second demo tape, Rotting West to Misery, it's called, uh, it contained six songs of the Shadows of the Past album. So it didn't make any sense to put that one in. And uh, the same with the, with the first one. There was really not a reason to release that one. I, um, and I think the whole re-release of Shadows of the Past was because um, Trust Records, uh, the French shitty label that um, released it, the uh, 91, um, only pressed a thousand copies of it, so it, it was really rare and unavailable, and that was the main reason to put it out through Century Media. Both the really brilliant and detailed cover artwork of this album, 
I really love it because it's old fashioned style and the well not so brilliant logo type has not been used on the reissue. But still, there were um, like nine tracks instead of eight from the original and also there was uh, lyrics included on this re-release of Century Media, so it was in a way more luxurious. So, um, what was the idea behind doing this? Yeah, I think uh, at that time when we uh, released the, the first album from the French label, the CD format was just getting, um, you know, on the market, and uh, they wanted us to save one bonus song for the CD, and uh, that's the reason there is um, more. Uh, there's nine songs on the on the CD version and the re-release, and only eight on the original album. The shitty label, as you just called it. They only released very few albums. It was uh, yours, it was Mega Slaughter's debut, a Swedish death metal band, and also the uh, Convulse debut album. Besides that, they edited most of the time singles. So did they first off offer you a single contract, or have other labels been getting in contact with you at the early stage of the band offering single contracts? Uh, there was some small uh, underground labels that uh, wanted to offer a single deal or something like that, but uh, Thrash was the first one to um, offer an album deal and we of course jumped on it. We didn't even read what, what it said there, only the album we saw and okay, let's go. And it turned out to be a mistake of course and the bastard still owes us money and stuff like that. So, But I'm not really surprised that they released only a few albums because it was not really professional. <laughs> you signed your second record deal with uh, Spine Farm Records, but uh, pretty soon North From Here was uh, licensed to Century Media Records and you stick to this label from there on. And you grow older with it and by now you're dying with it. Hopefully the label is not dying together with you as well. So back then Spine Farm was a very small label with, uh, let's say, hopefuls like Beherit in their rooster. Right now they are really, well, a power recognized in business. So did, did you ever had this feeling of, well, what would have become out of the band when we would have uh, remained on this label? No, not really. Um, at, at the time we were just happy to get rid of thrash records when we looked into um, the next deal and uh, Spine Farm seemed very nice as uh, they were finished and if they started to piss us in, in the eye we could just go to Helsinki and, and burn the place. But uh, you're right that uh, they, they did a very good job and uh, all the growth they have made uh, they totally have uh, deserved it. Did you ever have real hard fights within the band that uh, seemed to escalate in a way that you were close before disbanding? Uh, of course, there's something has happened along the way, but uh, still uh, nothing that we couldn't handle or, uh, you know, uh, the disagreements have never been as big as they would kind of uh, split the band or somebody would left the band because we have always talked them through and that's it. Over the years, Taneli announced in many different interviews with different magazines that he would never ever record the same album again and the time he was in the band, like I said earlier, there was a constant real dramatical change in musical styles while after you stepped in, but it already started, I think, with Amok and especially the mini CD afterwards. There was a more sort of a constant shape of the band. Of course, the albums differ, but uh, there are not that dramatic changes anymore. Yeah, I would say uh, we were headed for the for the some destination, and uh, I think the the style that we still do for one night um, started with maybe the Amok album, you know, to have this uh, song-orientated, melodic, uh, rocking kind of elements in within the aggression and, and all that. Uh, there was not really need uh, to, to change anymore that dramatically. 
I guess around the Amok album we found our musical style and uh, uh, we late continued uh, naturally to its, to its final destination. Amok and Love and Death already marked this consequent turn towards a more rocking sound. So could you think of uh, re-recording these albums? Have you ever thought about doing it? No, because they're great the way they are. And uh, to go back and record them, uh, uh, personally, I don't see any reason for it. I remember an interview when you were asked about uh, the auditions becoming the singer of Sentence that you afterwards thought that you really sucked big times and that you will never ever get this job. So um, and how far would you characterize Taneli's qualities? I mean his voice is rather limited compared to yours and uh, what are your different qualities? So what did you bring into the band? Um. The way Tonelli sings or roars is uh, something that I can't really do. And uh, personally, I think he's a really uh, charismatic person and also performer. And uh, what I brought to the band, I think uh, the way I sing uh, kind of um, creates even more melodies you know, within the vocals and also the guitars and everything. And uh, I guess I brought a, this kind of, um, oh, this is hard to explain. Um, I don't really like talking about myself, so this is really hard to explain. More melodies, period. Could you also say more emotions or more varied and mixed emotions besides just aggression? Yeah, I guess you could say that. Uh, I guess I'm able to uh, create more emotions with my voice than just aggression or or hate or whatever. Yeah, the, when Tonali left the band, uh, it was clear from, from day one that uh, we didn't want Donnelly part two or someone who is uh, trying to imitate him or something like that because it's simply impossible. Uh, and we were, you know, we had all the, all the songs ready for the Down album uh, and we're looking for a, for a guy that could bring something new and, and some new elements and some new possibilities to to um, make even more harmonies with the, with all the melodies and all the instruments and stuff like that. And we had a dozen candidates that we tried out and uh, were really starting to lose hope already. But uh, then luckily Vesa uh, came across with Wille and uh, here we are today. From down on, this aspect of black humor got sharpened within the lyrics especially, but yet they also got fixed to the maximum to this aspect of suicide. So have you detected this Finnish cliché attitude, especially as it is promoted to be in the rest of Europe, but just uh, the high suicide rates, for example? Uh, have you just detected this one that late? Um, I think the main reason for that is that uh, Tanelli wrote most of the lyrics when he was in the band and uh, after he was gone I wrote most of it and uh, uh, <laughs> ever since a little kid I have been fascinated by the idea of um, having the opportunity to end your own life if uh, things go to that and uh, it is like serious and very very funny at the same time uh, to to even have that kind of opportunity uh, to to go so deep in desperation that you actually execute yourself. It's a very interesting topic and uh, a good topic to play with also um, in, in the ways of humor. So uh, I guess that just um, started to show in the, in the lyrics when I started writing more. 
there any special lyrics that you once considered to be funny or at least not to be too offensive, offending that you now regret? Um, not really. It's, it's so useless to regret anything because uh, when you do everything uh, with your f full being at the time, it's then totally senseless to regret it later. Of course, there's some, some stuff that is not very impressing, quite a bit of it, <laughs> but uh, I still don't regret it. It's just uh, a part of this band's history and part of the field that lives within me. Recording in such a professional studio as the Woodhouse in Hagen must have been a big step forwards for you and also for you especially just stepping inside the band and having this opportunity. But still afterwards uh, you pretty soon returned to Finnish shores and recorded here with, yeah, we can say with a team that became mostly part of the band. Um, yeah, and uh, when Wille came to the band, uh, to the band uh, we also had for the first time a producer with us, uh, Waldemar Sarikta, and uh, Central Media wanted, wanted us to try out the, the German studio, Woodhouse, and uh, we didn't have a problem with it, and we just went with it and uh, did the Down album and the Frozen album there. But, uh, you know, When we were planning to record Crimson, we wanted to do uh, that one in our home country so that we can at least once in a while go home and, and relax a bit. Because uh, the, the apartment that Century Media gave us when we were in Germany was not really very nice. <laughs> and uh, it felt like <coughs> being in a prison um, when we were not at the studio. We already said Sami the second. I'm not going to pronounce his last name. Okay, uh, he was the latest addition to the band. So is he the second one without a death metal background at all? Uh, you know this one. Uh, I've been playing with him in several bands, and uh, actually, I don't really know that well. Uh, what kind of music? Uh, He's been kind of growing up to, but the bands we played in were more or less thrash metal, trying to copy all the Metallica and bands like that. The band uh, we were playing was called Dead City Babies. Nice name. <laughs> Shitty band. <laughs> well, entering this era with uh, Down, Frozen. You got better and better touring conditions and you left the stage of being just a support band. You got, um, well, at the same time this metal fandom in your home country in Finland, it started to develop, it started to grow in a way that uh, charts are by now more or less dominated by metal. So you started to break through in a way into entering a mainstream era, so to say. So what are your most pleasant memories when it comes to touring and what the most hateful ones? perhaps the worst conditions that you had on tour um, there's a lot of both I think uh, but the most memorable ones are of course when something happens for the first time like um, <coughs> selling out the, the Tavastia <coughs> club in Helsinki uh, or 97 I think it was Dynamo festival uh, like for the first time in front of a a very big audience and, and a great reaction and before that uh, the first European tours uh, back then it was all very fascinating and interesting and stuff like that but uh, it is very hard to pick out of uh, one favorite we are hoping tonight being maybe one of them or maybe even the one, but uh, we will see about that in, in three or four hours. Okay, you kept sort of a two years rhythm with your album releases. Did you ever feel like trapped inside a routine that is gonna kill creativity and friendship within the band? Uh, no, not really, because it was a two year circle and not a one year circle like someone, some bands seem to be doing. We always, uh, when we released an album, we toured for it and took a little break, which was 
basically the only alternative to remain sanity. It's undeniable that you grew more melodic and also perhaps to say softer from album to album, but yet there has always been a distance that you kept towards ordinary rock music on the one hand and to this um, gothic cliches, gothic metal cliches of several of the bands that followed your path, especially in Finland. So what is it that still kept metal attractive for you, that still kept you having your metal balls, perhaps? Um, it's pretty hard to analyze things like that, as we more or less always did just the thing we wanted to do. And uh, it didn't matter, matter that much uh, from from where it comes from or to what it's uh, compared to. It's just remaining true to yourself and trying to express in the songs uh, honestly something about human life and human death and not really thinking about it any further. What influence has your producer had on the albums and on the well, what later became of these recordings, did they sound rougher, for example, in the rehearsal room? Um, they sound like shit in the rehearsal room. <laughs> yeah, they sounded worse. Uh, so I think uh, we are talking about Keely here. And uh, he has definitely brought a new element uh, for the three last albums that we have done with him. And uh, he always, like, He has a nose of uh, smelling the, the kind of thing we want to smell like. And uh, I think he was after this clear but still heavy rock sound uh, that would serve the, the songs in the best way. And we were always very, very satisfied with, with his work. You sometimes produce certain songs in different variations. For example, a song that turns out to be more ballad-like on the album used to be a rocker in the beginning. Um, I guess they pretty much turn out the way we have a kind of planned or think about the songs the way they should sound. And uh, like I said earlier, they usually sound like shit in the rehearsal place, so the whole picture is in our heads and hearts and uh, the songs don't really change a lot in yeah. the studio because we know what we want and Healy doesn't want to interfere because he agrees with it so it's just mainly the, the work to get it in recorded uh, in the best way possible He got priority from your label You entered this mainstream market and you got uh, real top positions on festival buildings all around the world. So whatever you're gonna do afterwards with bands that already exist, with like Poison Black for example, or with projects that, that will appear right now, you will start, well, on a lower level again. So is this something that uh, really gives you the, the creeps? Do you fear it or is it also a great release? Uh, personally, I haven't really thought about it. It's always been uh, just making music and uh, to start from the bottom, so to say. Uh, it doesn't really uh, matter as long as, uh, <clears throat> you know, you feel that uh, you're doing something that you love and feel passionate about, so uh, don't really care. To say that the band in the end has become too big, so that music, making music with all of his activities around concerning touring, concerning album releases, promotion is not fun anymore? Or is it the other way around that it has not become big enough to remain fun? Um, as strange as it may sound, uh, it has in a way become too big. As uh, on this level, you can't really um, survive without making major sacrifices um, and you know especially things like friends and family 
we both have children now and, and stuff like that, it's just getting harder and harder. And uh, I think that is one of the main main reasons to to call, call it uh, quits now. Uh, while we still can make a, something stylish, something special, and are at the peak of our own mountain of shit. So at least mostly all of you got visions how well, to continue at last, how to get rid of your creativity in a way so you're not ending up in a mass grave. So. Yeah, who knows, but uh, I think everyone will continue expressing themselves one way or the other as uh, we have grown up uh, with that and it, it's not something you can suddenly take off out of yourself and, and throw away. It's just uh, there has to be some channel to, to pour the shit and uh, suddenly there will be something. You try to channel shit by becoming an author by now. Um, yeah, that's one way. Uh, and I'm not yet saying becoming author. I'm, I'm uh, trying how, how it goes and, and if it turns out to be something that I can live with, maybe then, but uh, I will continue always, always also with music and at the moment I'm pretty, pretty much looking forward to getting back to the cellar again when you don't have to worry about anything else and just playing with some, some other guys and just having fun together and without an audience, without any further obligations. It uh, sounds like a great freedom. I guess you will continue with Poison Black. So do you see yourself more to be a performer or a creator? I see myself as an alcoholic. <laughs> um, I don't know, I, I guess a bit both, because uh, <clears throat> I can't deny it, uh, I love being on stage and, you know, performing and playing music, <clears throat> but still, um, a bit both, I guess, I don't know, and an alcoholic too. I think Visa will continue as a graphic designer and uh, the other Sami at least has got uh, this band called Solution 13. But uh, what the hell is uh, Mika going to do? Uh, well, I think and, and hope that he will have a new band very soon as uh, he's really the, the most talented musician I've ever met. And uh, uh, it would be such a waste if if there was, wasn't anything, but I'm, I'm confident that uh, he will continue one way or the other, in one band or the other. Well, since planning and recording the funeral album, you had lots of time to really reflect upon your decision to quit the band, so does everybody within the band share the same feelings about giving it the quits, or? Uh, yes, at least at the... <coughs> at the point we made the decision. Uh, it took us at least two years to, to think about it and it was a very hard decision, obviously. Uh, and I think everyone went, went through his own process of, of um, seeing what is important in life, what is the best for this band and the best for the people in the band and so on. But uh, it was a summer summer 2004 when we finally reached uh, the agreement that uh, this is this is the thing meant for us and this is the way we want to go you already labeled yourself to be an alcoholic so will the ending of the band be a blessing for all of your livers <laughs> in a way yeah <laughs> at least there is um, less free booze available. Because with other projects you are um, entering a stage where the statues are smaller, so there is not that much beer, not that much moonshine or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, I haven't really thought about it yet. Uh, you can buy the beer 
even though you are not playing in the band or whatever, but uh, just being more or less this drinking thing, uh, especially on tours, uh, the way to escape or just forget yourself and uh, the place where you are. What has been the most surreal moment or experience in this life as a band member and what has been the most funny one? Um, the most bizarre one was maybe the, the first time we went to the States. We were supposed to headline this indoors festival they had in New Jersey. And uh, during our day, uh, some local demo band started a fire and uh, the whole festival was stopped for two or three hours and we ended up uh, suffering the most uh, of it and in the end we only played, played three or four songs 15 minutes or, or 16 minutes and uh, we, we later calculated that for each minute on stage we traveled more than 1000 kilometers so that was something else the, <coughs> the American dream of sentence Is there a glimpse of hope for reincarnation of the band, at least temporarily, for a festival or something like this, in this shape of the band? No, no. This is the funeral and uh, there is no afterlife for Sentence. You know, the, the whole scene nowadays lacks character and principle, and at least we are trying to show some. So do you think you will burst crying in the end of Tonight's show? Um, impossible to say, but uh, still possible. I'm not promising anything. Would it be part of the Finnish mentality to hide these emotional outbursts? Uh, yeah, I guess so, but uh, I guess if we feel like crying, we cry. I think every, each one of us uh, is uh, being as honest as possible stage tonight. It's the last time. Yeah, and it's, it's not necessarily the crying because of sadness. It's uh, this whole range of emotions going going on that has already happened uh, many times on this farewell tour. Some really strange feelings uh, here and there. Do you think you will stick to this kind of morbid atmosphere with any kind of project that you are doing by now? Not necessarily, but uh, possibly. <laughs> It's something that seems to always come out when one of us start to create something. And uh, I don't think that's gonna change very much, even though it will be for something else. But uh, certainly the, the thing we have had with Sentenced will not be repeated the way it has been. I think the only thing that I can say by now is uh, thanks just for letting us witness your death. Rest in peace. I mean, you're sentenced to death, judged by your own will. And uh, only death is real is one of the old slogans. And yet most of the people say sometimes death is better and it's just the beginning of it. So you said there will be no afterlife but please have a nice one. Thank you. You too.